Welcome back, Rod Little uh, is still with me. Rod, uh, let's move on and talk about uh, something else you've written, and I am livid about this, about COVID lockdowns. I mean, I know more than many people the damage this has done to children. What, what the government did, I think is unacceptable. I think actually it's child abuse. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, I, I went along with the first lockdown. I was probably wrong to do that, uh, but I, uh, I minded my P's and Q's. I even wore a mask. Um, uh, and and uh, and by and large, I thought the government doesn't really have a grip on what this, uh, and no government does on on what this uh, virus means for us all. And so I kind of supported the first lockdown. Subsequent lockdowns were absurd. I mean, just yeah. absolutely absurd. And we began to learn by the end of May 2020 just how damaging the lockdowns were for kids. Uh, and the thing that worries me, um, I mean, we've had a report out by a, by an amalgamation of uh, of children's charities talking about the uh, uh, the profound mental distress and retardation of kids as a consequence of lockdown. It would have been nicer if they'd said a few things about lockdown at the time, in my opinion. Uh, but of course, uh, the charities were all on board with uh, keeping us all at home and silent and. Uh, and not going anywhere. Um, and the reason it's important now, I think, other than to realise that we've really marred the childhoods of, a, of you know, uh, an awful lot of young people, is that there seems to be a growing feeling with winter approaching uh, and a new COVID, the Pirola variant, uh, hopping mm. around. Uh, I noticed that the Scottish National Party has refused to rule out lockdowns, you, you know? So it's all kind of coming to be back on the agenda. Mm. I, I, I think what they did to children and indeed the elderly and those people in hospital was absolutely horrific, abhorrent. Yeah, no, I do. I, I, my daughter got no tuition whatsoever mm. at her state school. <laughs> she was at state school in, um, in the southeast. Uh, and just got no tuition whatsoever, yeah. and of course was deprived of, of seeing friends and uh, and and going out. I, I, it's a, just a dreadful, dreadful time. And while you understand it a little bit, mm. the first time around, there, there was no excuse for the subsequent lockdowns. No, I and, agree totally, and I, I went along with the first one as well. I thought, as we yeah. gather evidence, this is probably a pragmatic yeah. thing to do. The others are completely unjustified. But also, we then had things like the government's counter-disinformation unit, didn't we? Monitoring well, people yes. like me, and probably you. Yeah, it really began to worry me, um, uh, the, the degree to which the BBC particularly went along mm. with this, uh, but also that the government, uh, with its disinformation units involving the military at one point, uh, which, which was to, to dampen down genuine issues such as the efficacy of lockdowns, the efficacy of masks, and indeed the possible side effects of vaccines, which mm. is an important issue. You know, you don't have to be a, a, a deranged conspiracy theorist to, to, to ask questions about vaccines when we know, and this was originally um, uh, canceled, you weren't allowed to say this, that there was a link between vaccines and blood clots. Well, there is. There is. Know, you know, there, we have to be clear about that. And we have to be clear about what the other possible side effects are. Uh, without being, you know, the, the more you stamp down on this stuff, the more the conspiracy theory mm. grows. And of course, as you say, there's the whole nudging, the mask coming back, more yes. vaccines. This should be about informed consent. And as you rightly say, we didn't have informed consent. No. We didn't. And, and the mask business, I don't know how many more <laughs> uh, international meta-studies, meta-analyses of mask wearing there needs to be before some of these jokers I see walking down the street in their masks understand that they are of no use whatsoever. Mm. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 it's just, I saw someone driving a car in one the other day. <laughs> and what's the point? Just, On his own? On his own. Yeah. There was no one else in the car, driving a car with a mask across his face. Looking very pleased with himself, he was. Well, well I'm sure. Yeah. I, I'm sure. Well, um, let's move on. Uh, you, <laughs> you'd never heard of Caroline Diniage? Uh, no, I haven't heard of Caroline Diniage. But Dinage. now you know who she is. Now I know who she is, and uh, what, what a joy she is. She immediately joins my rank of cretinous Tories alongside <laughs> the appalling Caroline Noakes. Um, 
Uh, what did it? She's chair of the uh, Culture, Media and Sport Committee. Uh, and she wrote, I, I just don't understand what possessed the woman. She wrote a letter to the website Rumble telling them to demonetize Russell Brand's account, stop him getting any money from him. What possible right does a politician have to do that? Mm. You know, I have no time whatsoever for Russell Brand. You know, if someone could point to me somewhere where he said something funny, I might be a bit more kindly <laughs> disposed towards him. <laughs> But, you know, he's not, he's not my cup of tea. And some of those accusations, without question, are serious and they need mm, to be investigated. Mm, of course. You don't do this, you know, it's, it's always these days guilty until proven innocent. And, of course, it's very, very difficult to prove your innocence. Mm. Uh, I, I think what she did was outrageous. Uh, and she should, as some of the other members of the committee have suggested, uh, resign. Mm, big state again. Uh, also, yeah. uh, I had an education this morning reading your column about furries. <laughs> furries. No, furries, yeah. What are they? Oh. Uh, furries, are, uh, furries are people, usually youngish people, who uh, dress as animals and wish to be treated as animals. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and because we're in this position at the moment where whatever they say we have to <laughs> indulge them in uh, you, you know whether it's whether it's a it's a it's a, a, a boy who wants to transition into being a girl okay you are a girl uh, similarly <clears throat> a girl who wishes to transition into a cat is a cat <laughs> and so uh, a mate of mine who, who runs a, uh -huh. a, a really lovely uh, bakery coffee shop near me had his first meeting with one of these mm -hmm. parents come in uh, bringing with them a 16-year-old girl who is dressed entirely as a cat and spent the entire time crawling around on the floor, uh, you know, as cats probably would do. <laughs> right. And, and I, I, you know, the, uh, my mate said to me, he said, I didn't really know what to do because if I'm <laughs> no. probably treating her as a cat, uh, then she shouldn't be in the shop. I should say, get out, we don't have cats in here. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Which seems to me reasonable enough. Uh, I suggested to him, you know, that, that what he should have said was, look, if you're a cat, act like a cat and go out there and sit under that car for an hour and then run into the middle of the road in front of a lorry. You know, that, that's, that's how cats behave, isn't it? Well, well I, I, I would agree. Uh, also, I noted here about uh, your, your bemoaning public sector workers. They're taking off too many days for sick leave. Yeah, well, well there, there's a growing divide, and it, it, it was hastened by COVID, uh, where actually the, the, the public sector uh, increased dramatically over the private sector. Uh, and uh, it's now true that uh, public sector pay is higher than private sector pay. They have more holidays, they have better pensions, and they take more sick days. They take almost double the number of sick days mm. as people in the private sector. And you've got to start asking why. I mean, obviously, uh, and one understands this, they need to go on all those uh, stop the Tory demos in London. So you've got to allow a couple of days a year for that, at least. <laughs> um, as they said, as, as, well, whenever you go to these demos, it is always public. It's either public sector workers, charity workers, or students. You know, <laughs> No, no one who's got a proper job, in other words. Or a freelancer yeah. who doesn't earn any cash. You can't, you can't afford That's to do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you, you just, it, but there seems to be an indulgence in the public sector, which doesn't extend to the private sector. Now, you might say that, 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 that you know, uh, News UK should be far more indulgent with us about the days we take off. But uh, if Definitely. we want, a, yeah, if we want a sound economy, uh, then then we need a public sector which actually lives within its means and doesn't allow people to swing the lead. Because, mm. frankly, mate, 10 days off a year, which is the average in the public sector. Mm. I haven't had, I had, I had last had a day off when I caught Listeria <laughs> on the day I took over as editor of the, the, the World Tonight, and that was 1996. <laughs> no, they don't make I, them like you anymore. That's the problem, Rob. <laughs> but it's not, it's not as if I'm a paragon of health, you know? <laughs> I, I mean, don't wish to comment. I don't wish to comment. <laughs> uh, very, very quickly, though, I said it was a very educational uh, co um, uh, column indeed. I've learnt um, something about dentures. Tell us about this story. <laughs> do, you, do you not watch Tipping Point? I can't say I do. I, I, when I finish my work for the day, I, I turn on at five o'clock, it's on at four o'clock, but you get these channels where you can 
go back in time. If only we could go back to 1952, but we can't. Anyway, why would you go on a quiz program if you're thicker than a block of David Stone cheddar cheese? Why would you do it? Is it, is it a joke? There was a bloke on there earlier this week. His name was Mike. And he was asked, what part of the body would you wear dentures? <laughs> And with great confidence, he said, feet. <laughs> well, why would you do that? Why would you go on television the next and, and reveal yourself to be this uh, a shrub? <laughs> you know, it's just, and, and yet you see it, you see it um, every day. It's one of the reasons I watch out of spite, I suppose. Uh, the, the, the people are so dense. Um, the, the same programme, a woman was asked to name a Scottish writer, uh, a Scottish writer born between 17, uh, lived, who lived between 1780 and about 1840. And she very confidently said, William Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> William Shakespeare. <laughs> and and any, any sense of irony that she might possibly no, be around? No, no, there's, 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 oh, is it? Oh, thanks, Ben. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Oh, it sounds like a, I have an appointment with Tipping Point, uh, Rodney. Yeah, you've got, you've, got, you've got to have a look at Tipping Point. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for the tip, and uh, thanks uh, for speaking with me this morning. Great pleasure indeed. That was Rod Little, their columnist at The Sun.